Hi everybody, we're back with another video and this one is about polymorphism in C++. So we're going to take a look at this example. Uh, essentially, we're making a class and we're going to subclass it. Now, polymorphism, or uh, is also called runtime binding, utilizes the fact that you can create subclasses of a base class and then you can create a whole bunch of base class pointers and have them point to different types of children. And when you call those methods of the children, you'll call the correct function based on what type of a child it is. So let me, let's give a more concrete example here. Uh, let's take, for example, I'm, cre I'm creating a base class called animal here. And in order for this all to work, we have to remember, uh, there's a few things I'm doing here. I'm not only describing polymorphism. I'm also, uh, I have a few other concepts inserted in here. And one of them is called the rule of three. Essentially, we're also showing how to create a copy constructor, an assignment operator, and also a, spe a specific uh, destructor, which is also virtual. So first of all, let's start from the beginning here. Uh, this is our base class, and it's called animal. Now we're going to subclass this, and we're going to create a uh, dog class down here that's going to inherit from animal. So you can see here on line 60, this is how we achieve inheritance. But let's go back up to the animal again. And so obviously, this first uh, line is just a constructor. But we can actually overload the constructor. And this specific overloaded constructor is called the copy constructor. This copy constructor is important, and the syntax for it is mandatory. In other words, it must be an animal by reference, and it must be const. And the copy constructor's purpose is, for example, if we pass a object to a function, we need to make a copy of it. And by default, C++ will do this but it'll copy everything by value. And you'll see there is an issue in this animal class that we don't want that to happen. And the issue is this line on 21, which has a pointer. So this is an integer pointer. It could be any type of a pointer. But you'll see that, for example, let's take a look at the constructor here. Let's, here is the implementation of the constructor we actually allocate new memory on the heap for this pointer. Now this creates a, a really uh, interesting situation that we have to be careful of. And, and that is that this variable age p, age pointer, so to speak, is actually going to store a memory address. Now, if we copy by value, so if we scroll down here, you'll see that if we did not, I've got a little note here saying, if we did not have a copy constructor, what would happen? When you call a function, so let me show you what I mean by that. Um, I can switch to a whiteboard here. And if, 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 in, if inside my int main, if I call, a function, and let's say that function is foo, and I pass it, uh, I think the example in my code earlier is d. If I pass it that, and inside foo, if I accept, here, let's go back to the code, and I'll show you foo. Foo is right way at the bottom. Give me a sec to scroll down there. Foo's right there line 115. So foo accepts a dog and it's going to be dog f. But notice when we call foo on line 129 right here, 
essentially, we're going to make a copy of D. But remember, what are, what's one of the what is one of the attributes of a dog class? Well, since dog is inheriting from animal, it's going to have a pointer. Now that pointer, when it gets copied, it's going to copy the address. Now we don't. Now that's going to cause it to be by reference. So in other words, think of it like this: there is this D object here in memory. And if you, pa if you just simply copy the pointer value, now f, the hp pointer here, is also going to point to the same thing that this guy points to. So essentially, even though you're copying by value, because you're copying an address, now it becomes by reference. And you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. Also, for another reason, you don't want that specifically because in our destructor, we're actually calling delete. We'll get that. We'll get back to that to the second. But essentially, we want to have a new copy of anything that of of that pointer's value. We want a new uh, memory allocated for the f object in function foo. And so, how do we do that? Well, that means we have to specify the copy constructor and here it is for animal all we do and I, I just have a uh, like a C out here just to print out what's happening and we have now allocated new memory and then we actually do a deep copy in the sense that we're not copying just a pointer we're copying actually the value that's in that the value that that pointer points to in this case an integer and we're assigning that also to the F uh, integer. So we need this and going back to the rule of three at the top here, if you need one of those guys, you're going to need all three of them, specifically the copy constructor, the assignment operator, and the destructor. So notice if we continue to go down, our next line is the assignment operator for animal. And if we scroll down to the assignment operator, it's right here. It's actually, the, 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 um, the syntax for the header here is also mandatory. It must be an animal by reference. And this RHS is the right-hand side. So, for example, if you're going, um, you know, A equals B, then this is the right-hand side when you do assignment. And this first line, it's... I mean, this is like standard practice of, uh, of uh, for safety purposes. It's not really something most people, most programmers, I think, would do. But in case you do self-assignment and you uh, and you go a equals a, now you don't want. Um, th this is kind of weird in a sense. I, I personally don't understand why a programmer would type this, but in order to protect this. Uh, you would you can just return uh, a dereference of this pointer. The this pointer, by the way, refers to the instance of the class. So if you're familiar with Python, it's the same concept as the self variable in Python for classes. Um, and of course, what are we doing? Uh, we're actually dereferencing the h pointer and assigning it to the dereference of the right hand side's h pointer, such that we can have the same value for the uh, what the integer points to. Um, and then we're just re returning, uh, dereferencing this instance. So that's the assignment operator. And the next one is the noise function. Now, notice I'm declaring this noise function as virtual. What's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose of this is so that we can use polymorphism or runtime binding. Again, it means that if I create a base class pointer of animal, and I'm going to do that later, I'll show you, we can actually have it point to different subclasses and call the correct function of noise. So if we take a look at what noise is for animal, 
noise for animal just says gur. I, I mean, I'm not really sure what an animal in general, uh, what kind of noise would they would make, but it's fine. Um, the next function, and you'll see more about that when we go and when we do inheritance. Um, the next one, well, this one we've already discussed the pointer, and we'll come back to the virtual uh, keyword here, but also the destructor is virtual as well. So the animal's destructor here, and that little tilde character defines the destructor. And that one is just over here, and we're going to call delete. So when we for the constructor, we're calling new, as you can see up here. And so therefore, uh, we don't actually have to call new and delete manually now. All we it happens behind the scenes when we actually create an object, and when the object goes out of scope, it'll automatically be deleted. So that's our destructor here. Now comes the interesting part. Now we're going to now that we've taken a look at all the functions of animal, let's go take a look at the subclass or the inherited class dog. So sometimes you know we can make a little bit of modifications to an existing class. That's what a subclass is for. And again, we have the header for the copy constructor and the assignment operator and the destructor. By the way, uh, the destructor here, we don't explicitly need to specify that it's virtual. It's going to be virtual because the base class was virtual. Now here's another type of a variable called static. And a static variable is really interesting. So it actually doesn't exist for every instance of the class. It only exists uh, once for all instances of the class. So in this case, I have a dog counter. Whenever we create a new dog, let's say we have 100 dogs, then we don't need to iterate through all 100 instances of the dogs and increase the count if, an, if we create a new one. Let's say we create 101, then you wouldn't have to go through all the existing 100 and say add one to count. That's what, we, that's what you would do if it was an instance variable without static. But because it's static, if we change the count variable, basically all 100 instances will have access to that one variable in memory. So if we change it once, it changes for everybody, for all instances. Um, now we're adding another variable here called bool, and that's going to be uh, just a boolean shots, whether the dog has shots or not. And now interestingly here, noise comes up. Again, this is virtual because we said it was virtual in the base class. We can actually explicitly uh, say virtual here. It doesn't. It doesn't hinder us in any way. It's perhaps it's more explicit, but it is still optional. Um, but the interesting thing here is that you're going to see that the noise that the dog makes is different from an animal, and it's right down here. The dog says rough rough, which was which the if you remember the animal said grr. So. Keep that in mind when we get back to the polymorphism concept. Uh, one other thing about static variables, they must be initialized at file scope. So that initialization, notice it's not inside the class definition here. And we're not actually uh, defining it inside int main either. It does have the scope resolution operator saying that it does belong to dog which is good. We need that. But we've, we're initializing count to be 0 here. Uh, now, this one is the dog constructor. And the first thing we do in the, init in the initialization list, notice the syntax here. Some of you guys might not be particularly uh, familiar with the syntax of this constructor. Essentially, what I'm doing here is this it's got two colons here. That, that says that, OK, this function belongs to the dog class. But what's this colon for? And essentially what that's doing is it's setting up the initialization list where we can actually initialize variables. So if, you, if you'll notice before, uh, we can initialize variables in C++ using like a, a, 
let's say variables we can say int x equals one you can also say int x bracket one both of these are uh, equivalent but here we're using the bracket syntax and we're initializing shots to false after all it was a boolean now the um, the count here we're incrementing and we're also printing out something here to specify that it's a dog I just wanted to reiterate that here where I am creating or I should say initializing shots to false in the initialization list I can also alternatively do that here on line 84 uh, just by assigning it instead of using an initialization list the only difference is if this variable shots was const then I would have to I could only initialize it in the initialization list I can't initialize it here if that variable was uh, const but it's not so it, I can do it either place So here is the dog destructor. And of course, we're, we're uh, decreasing the count. Of, uh, we're decreasing count. Now, the next thing that we're going to go over here is the dog copy constructor. And if you'll notice, in the initialization list again, I'm actually calling the animal copy constructor as well okay so this should actually say uh, dog copy constructor calls base class copy constructor so and I'm doing that right there sending the copy constructor for animal D and then of course I set the shots now shots isn't a pointer so I can just simply copy it uh, straightforwardly by assignment uh, it's just a bool let's go down now to the assignment operator and again make note of the syntax for the assignment operator it returns a dog by reference and it belongs to the dog class and it accepts a dog by reference a const dog by reference and I'm using right hand side again I'm actually here in this function calling the assignment operator of the animal class pass um, and by the way uh, just to, just to clarify something sometimes beginners get this kind of confused they think this is an assignment I'm actually calling the assignment operator function this is a function call if you're wondering why I have brackets here I'm not assigning the variable operator to anything I'm actually this equal sign is part of the name of the function operator equal is the name of the function and I'm sending it the variable RHS um, yeah so essentially like if I go up here what what is the assignment operator for animal doing and it's right there so I don't have to I don't have to duplicate this code here in the dog one since I've already written this for animal and both the animal and the dog have the age pointer so I can simply just call this function from the the uh, the dog assignment operator and of course um, I'm also going to assign the shots which is an extra uh, variable that dogs have that animals do not have and then I'm calling noise or I should say I'm defining noise we went over this before so here is foo it's just a function that accepts a dog 
and this is interesting actually so this I'm I'm overloading the insertion operator here and insertion operators will take an output stream or I should say will return an output stream by reference they will accept an output stream by reference O and a const dog by reference and in this case that's just X and I and you want to be able to have this syntax uh, because when you return O you can do insertion operator chaining and that's the purpose behind uh, this syntax is so that I can chain multiple uh, objects together and I return O which is the output stream by reference so I hope that makes sense because every time you insert something you can insert something after it so it it basically needs to return that output stream by reference again now um, here is my main function and um, if we run this you'll see that if I kind of scroll up and we'll take a look at what's happening here so the first thing that happens is I create the dog D and my animal even though it's a dog my animal constructor is called first and then my dog constructor see if I perhaps if I um, make this slightly smaller I can see more instead of scrolling so much yeah so um, my um, after the dog is created, right, there are now one dogs. Inside the dog constructor, I, I print how many dogs there are. Now you're going to see the next thing is the animal copy constructor is called. Now why does that happen? Well, that happens actually right here on line 129 because I'm sending D to foo. So the copy constructor gets called. And remember, foo was up here. So D has to be copied and the copy F has to be created that's why the copy constructor is being called uh, printing dog in F age is 10 and shots is 1 now notice that we changed that so here the dog age is set as 5 and when we send it in function we have age equaling 10 before we print it and in fact that's what we get the age is 10 now if we delete that line or if we comment that line out in foo this one here if I comment this line out and I run it again now you're gonna see that here it says printing dog and if age is now five so that's that's the age that we set before we sent it there but a copy is made um, and so if we um, since we since we're not changing the age inside foo uh, how about you know actually an interesting thing here to do would be um, perhaps to let's go back and let's um, uh, not there let's go back to foo and let's uncomment this but let's also copy that line paste it there and then let's print out dog f twice so before we change it and after and you'll see now that if I compile and run this now the age is five and that's what the dog was before we called function foo on line 129 and then it's the same but when we change it to 10 F is now 10 inside foo but now the question is hopefully if the copy constructor worked properly we're not going to change it once we leave the function so right here on 131 by the way before before we get to line 131 once the function foo ends 
the destructor for the dog is called. Now, which destructor is that? That's the destructor on object f. So dog f got created for the function foo. And when we hit end of scope on 119, the destructor is called. So that means right here, there's the destructors for the dog when the function finishes. Now when we print the age of the dog after the function, after foo right there on line 131, it says the dog is 5. Now that's good because we did change F's age to 10 and that did not affect the age of D, dog D. Uh, so now we are going to go into an if block here, if one or if true, and we're going to create another dog here. So that means uh, our constructors are going to be called. There's now two dogs. Now we have an assignment operator where we have R equaling D. So R's memory is is allocated on 135, but the assignment operator makes sure that the pointers aren't copied, but what the pointers point to are copied. And that was up here in the assignment operator for dog. Notice the assignment operator for dog calls the assignment operator of animal, as we mentioned earlier. So that's where the assignment of right there. That's where the assignment of one age gets assigned to the other one. But you notice we're not allocating any memory in operator equals. We only did that in the copy constructor, not the assignment operator. Um, now, what's next? Now, of course, we're using the friendship. Um, this is something I think I may have uh, not clearly explained. The insertion operator has to be declared as a friend and that's right here. The insertion operator is a friend. I don't, I th I don't think I have that for animal. No, I don't. I only have it for dog. Uh, but that's okay. So friendship is given and that's actually, so right here on line 74, I'm saying friendship defining the header and then where am I define that function it's down over here on line 121 notice that this is not part of the class so I'm not making the insertion operator part of the class but I'm rather I'm making it a friend of the class so that I can send objects of this type to to the insertion operator so yeah, that's happening right here on 137. And then here's where the polymorphism or dynamic binding part comes in. I'm actually creating a base class pointer, AP or animal pointer, but I'm assigning it to the address of a subclass. So the address of D is the dog, which is a subclass of animal. So these, these types don't exactly match to each other. The pointer is an animal, but the object's a dog. Can you do this? Absolutely. In fact, um, that's what the whole purpose of polymorphism is, is that you can assign children objects to base class pointers. Now, when I call AP noise, this should actually say not ger. Even though AP is an animal pointer, it should say rough rough because it points to a dog. And when I show you the output, you can see that it says rough rough. So that polymorphism did work. Now, think about this for a second. One of the restrictions in C++ is that all the types in, let's say, for example, a vector or an array have to match. They all have to be the same type. So imagine making an array or a vector of all animal pointers. Now, if those animal pointers point to different subclasses, like we made a dog subclass here, but imagine if we had other subclasses like a cat or a bird, 
you can now call the same function on all subclasses, or I should say on all the pointers that point to different subclasses, and they will perform the correct operation that is defined in the correct method or function that is defined in the subclasses, all through base class pointers. So that's, that's the concept of polymorphism, and I hope this uh, example described it. Thanks for watching.